I'm fine. How are you? Jeez, long time now. You don't come to Durban anymore. Well, COVID doesn't allow people to come to Durban anymore. What are you talking about? Well, I mean, we can go home. We can always come and visit and say hi. I haven't really got an opportunity to talk to well. <laughs> We haven't been to Durban since that shark storm has happened. Oh, really? 2020? Yep. It was the 20th of March. Shit. <laughs> All right, guys, I've got um, Saucy Sharks coach Sean Everett. Uh, same story, guys. We'll start for, with the guys that are here and then we'll jump on online. Um, Sean, a lot went right in this game, but talk us through the impact of Venture Why in particular. Um, we've been writing and talking about how the Sharks have the ability to replace part of the distance, but it, it, I know it's just one game, but it's always the same back to me. Uh, yeah, you know, Ben, we brought Ben in, first of all, I'll give you a bit of a background. We brought Ben in to, to give us a bit of experience in the number 12 jersey. Um, we were also looking for a for a guy that's with a left foot, and, and he's got that, um, although we didn't have to use it today. Um, he's also got very good distribution skills. Um, and there were some nice touches from him today as far as that's concerned. So, yeah, I thought we just thought that he would be able to complement um, Lucanio and obviously create some space for the outside backs because with Hala and D now, the playmaking is actually coming from second set of hands. So, yeah, we're very happy to have it. On top of that, he's experienced and, and he communicates really well and shows leadership on the field. Walter? Uh, so, uh... It looked like uh, the Sharks uh, scored a lot of the uh, drives from turnover ball and mistakes from the Lions. Um, and uh, it, uh, is, is that also a useful game? Yeah, very much so. I think, I think you know, when Cash reviews the game, we'll probably see the same thing that we did. Um, you know, our plan the whole week was to put pressure on the Lions defensively. We felt that they would overplay in the wrong areas of the field, and if we defended well, we'll get reward from it. Um, but unfortunately for us, we did get those, but we were also not tidy in our attack, and, and we created opportunities for them. So if you look at the Stormers game, where the Lions won comfortably, you know, they forced the Stormers into 25 turnovers and won the game comfortably, so we're wary of that. Um, I think for us today, and, and chatting to Berger now, I think the frustration was on our kickoffs, um, both ways, sending and receiving. Um, I don't think it, both teams were, were, were good enough in that area. Um, and we were never able to get away on the scoreboard because of that. Um, so we need, it's, it's a big work on for us. Uh, how did you see the scrum battle? Yeah, we knew it was going to be tough. Um, the Lions obviously have gained most of their penalties at scrum time and they, they are the most successful scrum team in the URC at the moment. Um, so credit to them for that. Um, obviously Ox and Thomas being Springboks as well, we knew we could nullify that. Um, but yeah, we were happy, and I think uh, yeah, we conceded one scrum penalty right at the end, which put us under pressure again with a score at 40-37. So not ideal, but but yes, a big improvement on on our set piece if you look back over 12 months. Uh, with a score at 40-37, uh, uh, with about 10 minutes to go, uh, were you worried that you might uh, maybe let this one slip? Yes, very much so. Um, it was tense right until the end. I think, you know, the, the try that Lucanio scored at the end, we were a bit lucky against the runner play. And, and once again, it came from a from good defence and a turnover from the Lions. So, yeah, that took the game away from them. But, yeah, we're just very happy with that we got the win up here at Ellis It's the first game of the year. Um, but to get, as you rightly said, the Sharks, the pre COVID Sharks should have hit the place to score tries from the two lovers. And today was another example. Do you feel that the Sharks are slowly up and actually returning to that style of play that are so successful until, until COVID happened? Yeah, very much so. I think, you know, the type of rugby that you play is also depends upon the personnel that you have. And and having guys like Sabu and Kosi Mapimpu who scored three tries and, and Apalele Fasi at fullback who's who's much improved in his performance from the, the game that he played against the Cheetahs, you know, obviously, you know, there there is opportunities and, and those guys can nail them and, and that's what happened tonight. Or oh, this afternoon, and obviously that's that's the reason why we won the game. You feel that it's still a bit of a way for the European teams, now, but do you feel that they'll like get better to South African conditions as compared to the slower slot that you guys had in Europe? Yeah, I think you know the, the opposition that you play there it, is is different from week to week. You know, so we played against the Ospreys in the one week, which is a very 
kicking or a kick orientated team, you know, they kick a lot. Um, so we had to play a little bit different um, against them. And then the next week we played against um, Cardiff, who who like to move the ball around a bit. So I, I, I would say it's probably to to generalize and say that they 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 slow and they don't attack that well is probably not true. Um, they do play attractive game of rugby, as as we can see. Glasgow are really doing well. Edinburgh are doing well, and that's why they are where they are. You know, with the likes of Leinster. And think finally, from us, just talk us through the excellence of your back line players. I mean, Kanye Arthur had a good game. Bakasoli had a hat trick. Smooth. It wasn't as good as Flash Flash so Billy said. They did a play the puzzle. They played the puzzle. Yeah, you know, like I said, those guys are the best in the world in their positions. Um, if you look at Mapimpi, I mean, he's, he's got to be the best left wing in the world. Um, we talk about Cheslin Colby, but I mean, every time Mapimpi plays, he manages to get over the chalk, whether it be in international rugby or domestic rugby. Um, Lakanya um, um, has just been absolutely superb, probably the world's best 13. So it's just great that they can perform like that for their franchise. It just shows that they're proud of their franchise and, and they want to pay pay back to us. So sometimes you you get players that that perform at international rugby and, and, and don't really bring it to the party domestically. So yeah, they're just great people. Um very grateful to have them at the Sharks and obviously, you know, they're happy to be where they are and, and put on the black and white and perform at the highest level. Thanks guys. Uh Michael, I see your hand. Yana, I see your hand. Michael, do you want to go? Thank you very much. Sean, a um, bit close for comfort there in the end, but the energy that you guys brought, um, you had spoken in, during the week about the altitude and and it looked like you guys really, really brought a lot of energy, scoring a try right there in the end there as well, proved it. But um, lots and lots of positives. You must be th very, very grateful and very, um, very happy. Yeah, Mark, there's a lot of positives to take out the game. You know, it's easy to reflect on the, on the mistakes, but I mean, you've got to look at the good rugby that was played by both teams. I think it was a great entertaining game for the spectators at home and for the couple of thousand that were in the that were in the stadium um yeah you know it, it's never easy coming up to the to to the half felt to play um especially with a three o'clock kickoff i think the weather was kind today i think if we had a day like yesterday it might have been a little bit different um it was a scorcher <laughs> yesterday while we were doing captain's practice and today it wasn't as as hot as as what we had predicted but yes the guys are in good shape i think the six week break that we had between the last game and now has helped all the franchises to pick up a little bit of fitness and do some conditioning and that's why we're able to play at high intensity for the full 80 minutes so we haven't had a that type of break since since 2020 you know so yeah it was a welcome break the guys are refreshed they spent time with their families and i think that would have helped us and and revitalize and, and recharge the guys battery Thanks, Michael. Jan? Yeah, uh, Sean, uh, just to follow on from that, very similar to what Michael just asked in terms of the tempo and the uh, intensity of the game. N now that the South African teams, and in particular these team, two teams, uh, have got a couple of games, in, in, on, and do you think this, this level of the game can raise still considerably? Yeah, very much so. It's been a bit of a stop-start affair, you know, because, <clears throat> you know, first of all, we were away for four weeks and obviously with the international players missing and then and then came back and had those two games cancelled and then a game thrown at us at the last minute domestically. So And we haven't played since then. So, yeah, it, it, it is a bit frustrating that you can't string games together, but now we've got that opportunity and it, and it really bides well for all the South Africa teams going forward that they can build some continuity, first of all, in, in selection and secondly, as far as cohesion is concerned. Um, you know, there's the four weeks now, we've got one under our belt and then we've got three domestic games left and then there's international games and hopefully you know the COVID will disappear for a while and, and we'll be able to get some international teams back here in South Africa and and be able to play against them in these in these great conditions that we had this afternoon. Michael you answer up. All right thanks. Uh, Sean um, you didn't really talk too much about the, the, the different positives but um, where did you feel you guys were better today? Yeah, I think it's the opportunities Better that we, the lines. Yeah, I think it's the opportunities that we created. I, you know, I wasn't really happy with the penalty count at half time, and that was due to us. You know, going in front of the kicker is, is inexcusable. We gave away a penalty after a kickoff, so put ourselves under the pump. But you yeah, are very happy with the click attack and the way we were able to move the ball and the continuity. And I think the try from the right hand scrum in the first half was a really good example of that. We had probably half a dozen offloads in the build up to that try, so that was pleasing. Um, 
I think they we managed the game at well at, at well at times and probably managed the game a bit better than the Lions and that's why we came out on top. Um, however, like I said earlier, we need to work on our exits and the accuracy and the execution of those. Can we take two more guys before we wrap it up? I'm all great. Thanks. Thanks, John. Anyone else? Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good Thanks weekend. Thanks for what I have. Thank you very much. Yeah, all the best. We'll see Thanks you in the for you. Thanks.